Hey guys, on today's show, we're going to tackle the ever fearful soldering items and how we use it in ham radio. So stick around. That's right here, right now on ham radio for non-techies. Welcome back, guys, to Ham Radio for Non-Techies, where we try to simplify the ham radio hobby to get you to study for and pass your exams, get you on the air, and enjoy this wonderful hobby that we all enjoy so much as quickly and humanly as humanly possible. So, like I said in the beginning of this, uh, this is going to be a, a couple shows, might be two videos, I might try to get it all done in one, but there's going to be two videos on soldering. I've done kit builds in the past, you guys watched me build antennas, build the uh, CW hotline, other things, all required a little bit of soldering. And I read the comments you guys leave. I read the comments when, when we do a live and things like that. And I see a lot of people out there that still have a fear of soldering. And I promise you, if you follow the steps that I show you here and get at least some decent equipment with a little bit of technique, a little bit of practice, you can solder. So trust me, I'm not a solder guy. I'm not a professional at this. And you'll see when you see me start soldering. But none of my joints have ever failed. None of my soldering kits have ever blown up on me or caused any problems. So whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it okay enough. But I want to get you guys through it. So the first part of this series is going to be what equipment to use. I'm going to show you what, what equipment I have. And all the gear you see here will be available on my Amazon store. You can go to hamradiofornontechies.com. In the top header, there is a button to go to my Amazon store. And this is all listed in there under one of the... I got it all sectioned out. But you can see which section has all the, the gear for like uh, kit building in your ham shack and stuff like that. Um, I gave you different options for different budgets. Not everybody wants to go spend... 200 bucks on a soldering station, I want something simple. So I give you different options for things, but all the stuff that I'm giving you is all reliable stuff. I'm not going to sell you or have you buy junk. I'm not going to promote junk on my channel. So I'm going to get you quality stuff so you buy once, cry once. And I think that's a much better model to live by rather than buying garbage at Walmart and continually have to buy it over and over again instead of just buying something nice the first time. So with that being said, guys, let's jump right into it. And I'm going to show you the gear that I've got. Again, this is, all, this is all stuff you should have, but you can get away with some minimum stuff. We'll talk about that as well. So stick around. Okay, guys. So as I said, we're going to run through some of the gear and equipment that I have here in front of you here. I'm going to kind of shoot this one-handed. So I won't be able to do a whole lot of demonstration stuff. But, you know, uh, the most important thing is going to be your soldering station. Now, I've got here uh, a Yahoo 853D, which I bought on eBay probably four or five years ago. And at the time, I think I paid about 80 bucks for it. And it's really nice because it's got a rework. It's got a rework station here. Uh, you flip it on the back. And you can turn on the rework station. You turn on the soldering iron. And it'll start going, immediately start heating up that soldering iron. Uh, this thing actually has a, this has a sensor on it. So that when you pick it up, it doesn't engage until you pick it up. So that's kind of cool. Uh, you also get like a voltmeter or testing meter down here. And you can, you can play with different little stuff on here for different testing things. It's got your, little, uh, got your little feeler gauges and stuff like that. And of course, you get your, you get your soldering iron. Uh, but you also get an assortment of tips. So there's different tips for your soldering iron. You have flat ones, wide ones, thin ones, all kinds of stuff. So you get all that with the kit, and you get also assortment of uh, attachments for the rework station. Now, I use the rework station to, uh, I used to heat up the uh, uh, heat shrink. If I'm doing heat shrinking on wires, that's what I use it for. I know it's not what it's really made for, but you know what? It works, and it's an all-in-one solution for, you now. I think they're now... This setup now on, on Amazon runs $154. So still not a bad deal, uh, but it's definitely worth putting some good money into it. Now, if you don't want to get something like this, your other options, they have a smaller version called the uh, Yahoo 862BD+, Plus, and that runs $120. And then a lot of the YouTubers, you'll see Josh and a couple other guys, they have the Haku or hey, Haku, it's H-A-K-K-U, uh, the FX888D, that runs $105. It does not come with the rework. It's just basically a soldering iron, and you turn it on and off. It's got some, uh, I think, some uh, adjustments for temperature, but it's a very basic one. So if you don't want to go full-blown with a big station, which is what I recommend, you can go with the smaller one and save yourself, you know, 50 bucks. 
Uh, the next thing you want to look at is going to be a way to clean your uh, solder tip. And this stuff works really, really easily. If you have your solder on, if you have solder on your tip here, you just kind of jam it in there and kind of clean it around, and it'll clean, it'll clean your tip up. Now, if you don't want to spend money on that, again, you're looking at this. This runs about oh, 11, between eight and eleven dollars for one of these, depending on which one you get. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can use. They have a little sponge in here. They were setting, and you know, you, you wet a sponge and put that in here. I think that's kind of dumb. I prefer this a lot better to keep everything dry and keep it all nice and clean. Uh, but you can go, go grab a Brillo pad and a little bowl and do the same thing for free at home. Uh, next thing is going to be uh, soldering flux. And I picked this up at a local electronics store here in town. All kinds of people make soldering flux, but a little you know, having some rosin paste flux is really good to have. And you can just uh, put a little bit of this on one of your components that you're getting ready to use. You haven't used it a whole lot. Uh, but you put this on one of your, on your wires or something, it helps the solder to uh, connect to it or stick to it a little bit better. So that's a good option to have. And then we come over to uh, things like your stands. I have a couple different little stands here. I've got this little like helping hands. It's got a little LED on here with a magnifying glass, which really helps out. So if you're looking at smaller components, you can bring it right up and bring it right into something and turn on a little light. If I can get it to work. And I won't, you, know, you won't be able to see it in the video because there's so much light in here. But you can really work this thing around and make it so you can see things a lot easier. Now, all of these uh, items here run between, oh, between $8 and $15 total. So I like this if I'm doing on if I'm doing boards, you can adjust the width of this with the little uh, the little adjustment screws here, and it's spring loaded on one side, so you can set it up for for how you want it for whatever size board you want, and you can flip it over and around if you're trying to do stuff and work on things. That way, it keeps your hands free. This is all about convenience and keeping your hands free. Uh, another one here, very similar, is this one. And it's just a little tiny component holder. It'll hold just various things. It goes out pretty wide. It probably would hold something like this. And it also allows you to flip it around and do stuff with it. But I got that for a different project. We're working on uh, making a, uh, an all-star node. So that's what that's for, is a little sound card on that. Uh, so you got your helping hands. You got your little PCB board stand. And then, of course, another PC board stand here. These are all fantastic little items to have. So let me get all this out of the way. The next thing is going to be a mat. Now, you can do this on a table. You don't have to have the mat. I like the mat because it's kind of cool. It has a way to keep your components. If you have a bunch of little components, you can keep them in here. You have all different places to put components on up the sides. It's got little holes to stick components in if you want to keep things more organized. And it has a little room for your tools and little things like that. And there's even some of these parts here are magnetic. So if you have something you want to put on here, just have it held down. It's a nice magnetic uh, spot there. But these are nice silicone mats. They won't melt. And even on the intense heat of a, of a, of a soldering gun, uh, these will work out really well. And these run anywhere between $8 and $39 a pop. So, you know, if it's something you think you might want to have, I have a couple of those on my Amazon store you can check out and uh, go from there. The alternative to that, let me get this out of the way for a second, is this Fiskars cutting mat. And these are really nice because they're large. They also won't melt very easily. They're uh, just, you know, just, li just little simple, simple mats. But uh, these run about, I think those run about $17, $17 maybe $25 one of those. They're a little more expensive, but they're nice. Um, if you are cutting things on, they are self-healing, but we don't really do a whole lot of cutting as far as doing soldering projects uh, in, in ham radio, as far as I know anyway. Um, other miscellaneous things, of course, you want your solder. And the solder that I use most, most of the time, oh, I see I've got Delta here. I've got Kester solder. In my store, I've got the Kester solder, which is 40% lead. And that's the stuff that I use and what I recommend if you're doing any kind of projects with ham radio stuff. You want lead solder. Do not use the non-lead solder. You know, if you get lead on your hands, use common sense. Go wash your hands afterwards. You'll be fine. But the lead solder is highly recommended for doing any kind of electrical work with ham radio. Uh, that brings me to, you have solder to put things, put solder onto things. Now, how do you get solder off? Well, you have a couple little things here. You have what's called a solder wick. And I don't know if I can get that, how, how close I can get that up to the, to the camera here. But this is like a, a stranded or braided copper uh, wire 
that you uh, can heat up and it'll it'll actually wick up the solder off of components um, in your on, during your uh, your builds. If you have a something like a uh, if you have a pass through component like something that goes through the board, like say you have like a capacitor that mounts into the board and goes all the way through where you solder on the bottom, but the capacitor or whatever's on the top. If you had to get that solder out, you want to use what they what they have what they call a solder sucker. And these are about six bucks. And you just basically, you load it up by pressing down the button there. You put this on one side of what you're going to solder while you heat up the other side. Let's see if I can get this done here. Yeah, you, you put this on, on this side while you heat up the other side. And then when you, when you get it heated up, you just hit the button. And it sucks the solder right out and cleans up the, the uh, holes on your, on your PCB board. So these are really cool to have. Again, it's not a necessity, you have to have it, but if you think you might have some issues where you might be screwing some things up, you've got to remove the solder. This isn't a bad little item to have, and they're super cheap. Like I said, the most expensive thing you're going to purchase here is going to be your solder station. After that, all the little accessories will kind of nickel and dime you to death, but pick out the stuff you need. You don't have to have everything. Slowly build on what you need. I'd say start off with maybe, start off with one of these here. And then start off with one of these. This allows you to move stuff out of the way. Uh, this allows you to, you know, put in uh, wires. If you want to hold wires together while you're soldering wires together, it allows you to do a lot of different little things. That'll be, that'll be, it'll make your life a lot easier having one of these. Um, the other thing I didn't mention before, sometimes you really need to have better magnification. And one of the things that I found was very useful was having a large magnifying glass. Now this one mounts to a desk and I just made a little temporary attachment here for it to fit on my workbench out here because I normally work inside but unfortunately the puppies have changed that for me for the time being. But you get one of these on here and it allows you to really magnify everything and it has a built-in LED light. We'll see if that brings it up. Yeah it's not doing it justice here but trust me it's it's pretty pretty bright underneath uh, this. Now these, I don't have uh, for, through Amazon. You have to go to like Rockler Woodworking to pick these up. I think they're about 35 bucks. I've had this one for many, many years now, and I use it for woodworking stuff, but I've recently started incorporating it into doing my solder build or my, build, my ham radio uh, equipment builds and accessories. And it's really nice because I can take this one, and if I need more power, I can take the other one up underneath that and it magnifies something even more. So I have two double magnifying glasses to really, really get down to those really small parts. I know some of y'all were uh, commenting about how when I was putting that SMD capacitor on the K6 ARK antenna, you know, it's so small, it's so small. And you're right, that thing's a size, it's about maybe the size of a grain of rice. It wasn't very big. Uh, so having this on here, or having that extra magnification really made a difference uh, for me when I was working on that project. Uh, the only other things I'm going to talk about here are really have a good set of tweezers. I think I picked these up. I think these were like 11 or $12 on Amazon. I've got them in my store. And it's just an assortment of different types of tweezers you can use to uh, get you going. And of course, wire snips. These are kind of cool for smaller wires because this end here actually will grab the wire and then snip and pull it, pull it away. But they can be finicky, so if you're not if you're not if you don't have a decent type of wire, this can end up stripping or cutting the actual wire and not actually stripping it off. But they're really cool. The snips on the other side are very sharp and very very well made, and they work every single time. Uh, of course, you have your standard snips, which you can pick up anywhere: Home Depot, Lowe's, Amazon, electronic stores, probably in Walmart. And then finally, um, I picked these up at I think I got these at Home Depot. I'm not sure what the actual model number is on these, but you'll notice they go up to 28 gauge. I had a really hard time finding a, a pair of wire strippers that would do 28 gauge. So if I'm making, if I'm doing antenna stuff or, or making antenna wire, I want to have something that can strip small, small wires. And I think this was the good answer for that. And these are about, I think they're 15 bucks at Home Depot. Go buy your local Home Depot, pick up a pair. They're, they're really worth having. So that pretty much wraps that up. Uh, you guys see the equipment that I've got here. And we're going to go into uh, some other stuff later on. Uh, you can also pick up an assortment of wire. 
I also keep assortments of magnet wire if I'm going to uh, make 49 to 1 un ununs and stuff like that or use uh, wrapping toroids. So I got different gauges of, uh, of magnetic wi or magnet wire. So you can pick that up as well. And it's just, you know, it's just basic little things. It all comes down to budget and what you want to do and how involved you're going to be in making uh, stuff in ham radio. But honestly, your most important investment should be a decent, reliable soldering station. This is going to be the, the pinnacle of, of your entire operation and be the most important thing. Everything else you can kind of accessorize as you need it. I didn't go off and buy all this stuff in one day. This is years of accumulation. Like, oh, I need to do this project. Oh, I need this part. Oh, I need this project. I need this part. So I bought things as I saw the, the need for it. So anyway, guys, let's go back up to the studio and wrap this up. But I think you guys get the gist. In the next video, we are going to actually do a soldering 101. We're going to actually use this kit that I purchased. And part of the kit is just putting in practice items to practice uh, soldering different components. And the other side here actually makes a little blinking LED thing. It's a little kit that I found uh, from a local place around here we have called Le Electronic Parts Outlet, or EPO. So we're going to play with this thing and use that for the, uh, for the lesson. And uh, I've also got a kit in my Amazon store where you can actually build a little FM radio. And I think the kit's like 15 bucks. It's not that expensive. So we'll get, we'll get to that here shortly, but I will see you guys upstairs. All right, guys, that was a pretty decent little rundown. I didn't want to get overly detailed into it, but you get the basic gist of it. Spend the money on a decent soldering station, have the right equipment, and get the accessories as your project dictates it. Um, like I said before, you go to my website, hamradiofornontechies.com, and right here on the left side, top of the page, here's my Amazon store link, which will take you right to the Amazon store. And there's a section called DIY ham radio equipment. All the different things I talked about in the video are in this little uh, collection here. And I gave you some options, different things, different price points, different color options, different features, stuff like that. Uh, this is that little FM transmitter uh, radio project. If you want to like practice with something before you start building something really, really, you know, uh, uh, expensive. This is going to be a good little project for you to try out and give it a shot and practice your soldering skills with. If you have an electronic store around somewhere, also go pick up a little piece of PCB board and go back, grab some random components. Go grab a little pile of components and start practicing soldering. Try your techniques. Learn how to get the, get the solder in there correctly and things like that. We're going to talk about that in, in more depth in the next video, but I just want to bring this up to you here and just show you that you do have options here for all different kinds of stuff. And the three different uh, uh, soldering stations that I recommend are also on here. So with that being said, guys, um, I think we're pretty much going to wrap it up. Uh, if you got any questions, I'm more than happy to answer your questions. If I have an answer for you, you can always uh, email me. You can hit me up in the comments down below, whatever you want. So in wrapping up here, uh, remember to click the like button down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And don't forget to subscribe. Uh, click on the little bell. You'll be notified when I do new videos. We will have another video coming out pretty soon, which will be the part two to this, which is actually going into the application of soldering. So stay tuned for that. Until then, next time. Uh, until next time, guys. This is Ham Radio for non-techies, and we are clear.